Hello, hello, everyone. Good day. How are you all doing? I hope by God's grace you are all doing well. As I am also doing well over here. You are welcome to Academy Showdown for Poly 111. Uh, today we are going to tackle the week four lecture that is government. My name is Nana Bafo, or you can call me Nana B. Right now, we are not doing the NBA anymore. We are doing it in Nana B. You can call me Nana B, and I'm going to be your, um, I should I say, your study group um, leader, or I'm going to serve as a guide for this particular session. So let's just dive straight into the session because there's, there's no time to waste. So governments. The meaning of government, functions of government, classifications of government. That is what that is what you are going to do today. Or we say the meaning of government. The word government has Latin root gubano, which means to steer or pilot a ship. Government deals with how to steer the affairs of the society. So on a ship, we always have a captain. A captain is the one who, who drives the ship, who makes sure that everything that happens on the ship is what is happening in the right order, as it's supposed to happen. If there are storms and everything, he needs the people, they should do this, they should do that, they should do um, everything. Then what they do it, he's staying the affairs of the ship. So, Whatever happens on the ship, either good or bad, he is accountable for everything because he is the, cap um, the captain and the leader um, of what? Of the ship and the people on the ship. So that's the definition of government. The governor means to stay, what? To steer or pilot a ship. She redefines government as a group of people vested with the ultimate authority to act on behalf of the state by making and enforcing policies. Let me read it again. She will find the government as a group of people vested with the ultimate authority to act on behalf of the state by making and enforcing policies. Not all the people in the state can enforce the policies. Therefore, we have representatives we have people that we give them the ultimate authority. We recognize them the ultimate authority to govern and enforce, implement policies to manage the day-to-day -day administration of the state. So in this sense, government relates to a group of people in the state that has the right to make decisions which affect everyone. First of all, the group of people have to be in the state and they have the right because it has been constitutionalized. We have given them that mandate. It could be through inheritance, through appointment, through elections, to give them that ultimate power to make decisions to affect everyone in the state. So the word government suggests three different meanings. First, government refers to a body of people with the power to make and enforce rules as well as punish those who break the rules. By this, government is linked to institutions such as legislature, executive, and the judiciary. So the day-to-day -day administration of the state, the judiciary is um, settling disputes to maintain law and order the legislature is uh, making laws, that's legislation, passing bills to laws, and the executive too is implementing developmental, economic, whatever kind of policy to, to, uh, to ensure the smooth conduct and sustainable living of people in the states. So these people have the power to do these things, to make and enforce rules and also punish those who, that's when you break the, when you go do bank robbery, you break the laws because it's not acceptable. 
to go and rob a bank, you are being punished by the judiciary arm of government. You could be sentenced to life or even to death. Or you plan on could deter the executive arm of government through the armed forces can punish you by life sentence, by killing you. Because you are trying to break the social contrast theory. They obey me and I'll protect your lives and properties. Second, no, I think we've dealt with the second one. So the third definition, no, the second one. We are now on the second one. Second, it deals with processes that are used in running um, the state. It relates to the act of governing the state. What do I mean by this? We have several ways of governing the state. We have the democratic way, the aristocratic way, the developmental governance, collaborative governance. These are several places. Dem democratic governance is when we involve everyone for the people. Aristocratic is when a few people, the eligible people, the elite people, or few people or persons have the right to rule. We have the monarchy. That is when power is vested in one hand. We have the monarch. We have, we look at them. We have the two types of monarch. We have the constitutional and the absolute. The constitutional is when um, the monarch only performs ceremonial functions. The absolute is when the monarch performs both um, functions as um, the head of state and also ceremonial functions. These are processes in running the affairs of the state. And the third one is regarded as an academic discipline which imparts knowledge on various means by which the state can be run. That's what we are doing. We are studying government. Government, and even SHS, we study government. We will eat, also will say, which school did you attend? Yes, even right now, we are studying it as an academic discipline. So I think we get the three suggest meanings of uh, government. Now, let's look at the functions of government. The functions of government. First, the state is represented by government. This means it performs the functions of the state. As the day-to-day -day administration of the state, it is the government who performs them, implementing policies, making laws, um, interpreting laws, uh, making public policies, embarking on developmental projects, evaluating poly uh, public policies. They are the day-to-day -day administration of the state because uh, day in, day out, yeah, they, they, there is always a hot debate at the parliament whereby they try to bring out the best way to implement policies. They bring out the best Way to make laws to uh, regulate the conduct of people to promote um, um, an harmonious living. Number two, maintenance of law and order. The judiciary arm of government settles disputes to maintain law and order. When there is land disputes, we send them to the courts, we go and settle it all it's for this person. He has brought out the evidence and everything. Then, therefore, the person is recognized as the one who owns the land. Therefore, you cannot go and torment him or her on the land again. You've settled it to maintain law and order. So if you go and do that, you've already broke, uh, broken the law, then you face the consequences. Number two, protection of individual rights and liberties. The right to live, the right to have job opportunities. If the state that will protect you, we are trying to legally establish uh, an institution or a company. You have the right to do that. The state will protect your rights, and no one can infringe on your right. The right to speak, the state will protect it. No one can say that. Therefore, in this area, don't speak in this area when you are working. No, you can't tell me that. If the state that will do all that. Provisional of social and economic services, social amenities like the school. Um, hospital, electricity, portable water, to promote a sustainable living, economic service, the uh, manage of the management of expenditure, uh, the and, and all other um, forms of economic what activities. 
the another point, national defense and security. Yes, the state through their armed forces protect the people and properties within the state. When there are conflicts, when there are fights, civil wars, ethnic wars in the state, between or among several ethnic groups, the same through the military and sometimes with the police service can what protect the people's rights. And even outside the country, when there's an external attack, we have a military force that's going to face the battle. When Russia and USA if decides to fight Ghana, we have our military men who are going to stand and overcome them in Jesus' name. We will overcome them, overcome Biden and Putin and all the Chinese and everyone who tried to um, fight against the states. Yes. The last one is international relations through ECOMOM, through AU, through IMF, through World Bank. It is the states. The president make these dealings, make decisions, participating these international organizations on behalf of the state, sometimes they support ECOMOC. When there is a fight in Ghana, we, since you are part of the ECOMOC, the ECOMOC will bring their military men to, to come and what? Protect or settle and make law um, order in the state, maintenance of law and order in the state. We are part of IMF. That's why we make dealings with them. That's why we can go to them 18th or 19th time as of now to go and seek for $3 million to come and manage the affairs of the states. These are all part of the functions of the state. So we've dealt with the three definitions, the processes, the democratic, the democratic, um, authoritative, um, collaborative, and all kinds of governments. We've dealt with the government being um, handed to the three institutions, the executive, legislature, and the judiciary. The third one is the academic field, and these are also the functions of governments. Let's proceed. So yes, the functions, they, they explain the functions over here, but I think I've already talked about them. So I'm going to move to the, the next one is the classification of government. Aristotle has classified government based on the following two questions. Who rules? Who governs? Who rules? Who manages, who steers, who drives, and in whose interest? At the end of the day, who is getting the bigger uh, gain, the bigger profits? What ideological concept do you have in mind in initiating, uh, initiating a policy? Are you initiating free SHS to benefit the people whereby young adults can go to secondary schools for free? Or you are initiating a policy that will bring money to your own coffers or into your own pockets. That is in whose interest. So who rules? The answer to the above question relates to a person who is given the power to rule or the people in charge of running the affairs of the state. Who rules? It refers to who has the power. In Ghana, the president, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, has the power. Has the power to pass a bill that you are going to do LG one 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 plus 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 plus, or has the power to reject that bill that no, we are not going to do this in my country or under my administration. Therefore, fellow Ghanaians, we are not doing that. Who rules? Who has the power? Why is he recognized that he has the power? Because he has gone through the what the constitutional process through general election to elect him by the majority as the what the head of state, as the president of the fourth Republican of Ghana. Therefore, we recognize him with absolute power to rule. The members of parliament, the MPs, the those at the Supreme Court, the chief justice, they also have the power to because some of them were elected, some of them too were appointed. The deliberation of um, power, power has been deliberated to them. So therefore, recognize them with that power that they can rule, they can make policies, they can interpret laws. 
they can make laws to us for, for the betterment of the people. Who sees the betterment? The betterment is being answered over here. In whose interest? In answering the above question, Aristotle maintains that government must rule in the interest of the people. To him, anything sort of that is not the best. And obviously, it is not in the interest of the people. Aristotle is saying that government must be in the interest of the people. Whatever you do, those who rule, whatever you do, should be in the interest of the people. Whatever bill you pass become a law, whatever developmental policy you do, whatever law you are made and interpret should be in the interest of the people, not in your own interest. So if you go and do something and you think about yourself only that by the end of the day, if I collaborate with the Chinese, uh, Chinese magazine industry, maybe I'm going to get 50% profit into my pocket every month then it's not in the interest of the people. Therefore, anything sort of that is not the best because it's in your own interest. But when you go and make dealings with maybe Russia, with Denmark, with USA, with Togo, with Cote d'Ivoire, with South Africa, and we, the states, are going to get maybe 40% profit of it to manage the affairs of the states to embark on developmental projects, then it's in the interest of the people. Therefore, it's still as the first. I think I've, I've done much about this. Aristotle argues that when a government is led by one person, it is called monarchy. That's when I was talking about these processes. The worst or corrupt form of such government is called tyranny. Tyranny. Therefore, what is tyranny? Tyranny is a rule by one person in his or her own interest. Whatever you do, you think about yourself only. Although the powers are in your hands, you are the one really. By tyranny is when you always think about your own pocket, the profit coming to yourself, not in the interest of the state. It also relates to the unfair or cruel use of power. Because you have the power, you are making decisions that will benefit yourself only, not the majority of the state. On the other hand, the rule by few people is called aristocracy, and the corrupt form of it is oligarchy. Aristocracy relates to a government by the best people who rely on virtuous or good and, mor good and moral principles to govern. Oligarchy deals with, with government by a few. So only few people have the right to rule not the majority, not one person, but therefore the right to rule, the right to govern is limited to few people. Aristotle refers to a government by many as polity. The corrupt form of this government is democracy. While polity is a form of government, democracy is actually a government whose leaders are elected by the people and the leaders constitute the government that is responsible to the people. Therefore, you are accountable to us. You are responsible for your actions and inactions to the people. You come and make account on whatever you do. We, the people, give you that power. Therefore, you are serving us. This means that under democracy, government rules not in the interest of any person or group, but in the interest of everybody in the state. Because before you even gain power, there has to be 50% plus one. And when you're above that 50% plus one, we, we know that, yes, then the majority of the people participated in that election therefore you are responsible to the majority everyone not a few people the monarchy 
This is another type of government. It is the rule by one person. It is a political system in which a single family rules. Let, let me bring it down, the Ashanti Kingdom. It's in one single family. There is no way I mean an above for me and a be a material. I can go and rule, I can become the Ashanti in it. Because I, I'm not aligned to that family. By in Bantama, I'm aligned to the Bantama. And maybe one day, one day I can. The Britain, the Great Britain. If you are living at the bar stop at Britain, you are not aligned to Prince Charles or Queen Elizabeth. There's no way you can become the monarch over there because you are not aligned to that family. So monarch, it is a rule by one person. It is a political system in which a single family rules. It is one of the oldest form of government. Under this government, the power to rule is in the hands of one person. Ken Charles, the only person who has the power to rule. An individual acquired this office through succession. He or she succeeds his or her father or mother. In this case, the mode of succession is hereditary. Elizabeth has been the Queen of England for several decades. As soon as she passed away, his son, her son, King Charles, succeeded her. There was no time for election. There was no time for debate. He's the oldest son over there, therefore, succeeded his mother. So through hereditary, he inherited that position to become the king of England. And the monarchy, the person ruling can be an individual who is a queen, a king, or an emperor. I think this is not something that we should explain. There are two forms of monarchy, as I, I named earlier, namely the absolute monarchy and the constitutional or limited monarchy. These examples come from, exist in Morocco and Britain, respectively. It's an examinable question. Which country practices absolute monarchy? Morocco. So you see Morocco, Britain, Ghana, Denmark. It's Morocco. Constitutional is Britain. Absolute monarchy. Let's look at absolute monarchy. Absolute monarch. An absolute monarch is an individual who has both the head of state and the head of government of a country. He or she exercises both ceremonial and dignified functions. Ceremonial functions, gracing occasions like this. March the Independence Day, Nanado, he went there to go and grace the occasion as performing one of his ceremonial functions. When the vice president of USA came into the country, the president welcomed her, and that is what ceremonial functions. And the other dignified functions refer to the day to day administration of the state, implementing policies and all those kind of things. The power of governments are absolutely not. And a serious check. Constitutional monarchy. Under this form of government, the powers of the monarch is controlled, limited by the constitution of the country. The monarch is only the head of government. He or she exercises ceremonial functions only. So therefore, we have someone, um, the monarch being being as um, the head of government, and you have another person being as the head of state. The day to day of a uh, running of the state is in the hands of somebody else who will be the head of state, who will be doing the day to day administration. Let's say the prime minister, then the monarch will be performing ceremonial functions only. So you understand this when we get to the systems of government, the presidential, parliamentary, and hybrid or mixed system of government. When we talked about the parliamentary system of government, you understand it. Argument in favor of monarchy, promotion of political stability. Monarchy promotes political stability. In what sense? It is seen in the right of the monarch to rule for life without unnecessary termination of their political tenure. Yes, 
you are ruling for life and therefore you make long-term policies. You are able to continue your policies. Whatever you do, you're able to continue. It's not whereby there's a change of government, whereby you are able to finish some projects. And when a different government comes, he or she will move to its own project. You can only come and continue when you gain power again. Or your opposition who gained that power can, fortunately for you, continue that project if your project aligns with its projects. The regular change in leadership of state sometimes creates problems of conflict and division in the society, which affects the stability of the state. Yes, I've, I've talked about it. All things equal, the life appointment of monarch tends to promote stability in the administration of the state because they have enough time to do a lot of things. Support and loyalty for the leader. Loyalty. Loyalty and support are two important ingredients necessary to ensure stability in the administration of the state. Since monarch, monarchs represent the customs and tradition of their people, the subjects, which is the people, normally are loyal to them and they obey such leaders out of their own free will. Let me bring you to common world. We have our chiefs. They protect and work in accordance with the customs and traditions of Commonwealth as a chief. That's why the people always obey them when they say something. When the chief says that no one should buy, no Commonwealth or no vandal should buy food at the night market again, no one is going to buy. Because they, they see the chief as performing and um, governing to protect the customs and traditions of what? of the people over there. The monarch always respects the customs and traditions of the people. Therefore, we obey you willingly. We don't obey you because you have the power to induce obedience, but we freely obey you because of what you do. This does not only provide confidence in the administration of the state, but also ensures stability because we all obey you and we all agree whatever you say. There's no time for conflict. There's no time to fight over certain things. Therefore, we live in a harmonious society and we all understand each other. Therefore, promote political stability. There's no interferences. Arguments against monarchy. A position is limited to few people. The position of a monarch is limited to a few people. That is people from royal families only. But if you are not from the royal family, don't ever dream. If you dream, in your dream or you're a monarch, please wake up. As soon as you see that you have been uh, you have been appointed or you've inherited this kind of position, please wake up. Or when they put you on a chair, you know that it's just a dream. In other hands, the office is meant for a few people, particularly those with the royal blood. This means that people outside the royal family, in spite of their status, position, or, or wealth, cannot assume office. No, they cannot assume office because the first step is to come from the royal family. Inefficient administration, this is very important. Because in like in like, <laughs> because eligibility is based on blood, competency tends to be sacrificed for blood connection, which sometimes go a long way to undermine the efficient running of the state. Because you are, the fact that you are coming from the royal family doesn't mean that therefore you, you fit the position. Sometimes you have competent people who can really rule the state, the affairs of the state. But since they are not from the royal family, they die with their talents and competencies. Someone in a royal family, I don't want to, I hope to speak down, but it's not coming. But I don't I don't know how to speak down. I think someone should should help me. Yeah, you can help me speak down. I will pay you. Yes. I'll pay you for that. I really want to learn how to speak guy in every end. Um, how's that? So, yes, I'll learn it. Yes, I did that. Don't know anything. Now, 
Oh, chess, I say. Now, oh, I didn't go for it. Don't know anything. Indeed, the fact that somebody is a member of the royal family does not maintain that that individual is competent enough to deliver to the public good. In, in point of fact, it is possible to have a person who is a royal and yet he or, she, he or she is what? Incompetent. He or she cannot do anything. And that says as a, a disadvantage to the monarchy system of government. Tyranny. Tyranny is a rule by one person in his or her own interest. On the original one, wow. It also relates to unfair or cruel use of power. It is also the cruel or oppressive rule. In this government, the people are fed by false information. The essence of this action is to deceive the people. Because he is trying to do things in his own interest. So he wouldn't really tell you the real things that you are supposed to know by therefore. But they will try to tell you false information, try to deceive you that, oh, the budget, we need 3,000 Ghana to this pay. But meanwhile, it's just 1,000 Ghana, 2,000 Ghana, no, it's into his pocket. The interest of the person only. That's it. Aristocracy. This is supposed to be the best government by the best persons or best citizens. It's also, it is also referred to as the government by a small group of intelligent people. Such government is based on intellectual uh, superiority of the ruling class in Kamiya team. I'm even tired. It is a government that runs that is run by um, a few chosen people who have distinguished themselves in terms of their best wealth, talent, status, among others. This type of government is exercised in Rome between the second and fourth centuries BC and with Britain in the 18th century. Arguments are in favor of aristocracy. It promotes efficiency. Why does it promote efficiency? Aristocracy promotes efficiency in the administration of state by assembling skilled and competent people to run up. When you have skilled and competent leading you, oh my God. They are always doing things in the best way. Before they give out a plan, they have a backup plan that when this plan backfires, this is the one thing that we are doing, the one best way. Scientific management. Useless theory, the one best way. When you get to 200 public administration, 213, you understand what I'm talking about, the one best way. It is based on their background. Aristocrats are able to provide proper focus and direction on how the state is run. It helps in the efficient management of the state's cash. Arguments against it. It promotes inefficiency. How does it promote inefficiency? It is always um, true that superiority of knowledge or intelligence can always lead to efficiency. Aristocrats can sometimes not be able to perform efficiently. Yes, we are humans and we cannot always do things the best, the very best. We sometimes we we get we have our own flaws and we yeah, one way or the other we we have our weaknesses, but yeah, it's all part of life. So that's all about today's lectures about government. We've talked about the government. We've talked about the definitions of government. We've also talked about um, the classifications of government. And we've also talked. We've also talked about the functions of government. Thank you so much for listening to this particular lecture. Please. Don't forget to like the video. I yeah, like the video or no. Let's subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Just type on the like, like, like the thumb finger, like, you know, just hit on it and crying. Like it. Else you don't understand whatever I teach you. That's my prayer on it. Like the video. I wish you all the best in your academic journey as you are in the 
heart of Ghana at Legon, the best university in West Africa. There are only two universities, Legon and the rest. Thank you so much for listening to it. My name is Nana Bafo. Ewa can call me Nana B and I'll respond to you. Stay safe. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.